Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Rebecca. This is an explanation of linker scanning mutagenesis to identify and map upstream promoter elements in the herpes TK promoter from Robert Weaver's 5th edition of Molecular Biology. This video was made as part of MCDB 427 Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. Let's describe a general eukaryotic promoter. Most eukaryotic promoters will have some but not all of these elements. Figure 10.20 presents an experiment where researchers attempted to identify whether these elements were present on a herpes thymidine kinase promoter. Let's go over the experimental design. The researchers performed an in vivo transcription assay in frog oocytes with two different constructs. They used a pseudo-wild type DNA to use as a baseline control for variations in expression, and various DNAs whose promoters were mutated using linker scanning mutagenesis. Each condition got the same pseudo-wild type and a different linker scan DNA. The researchers let transcription happen, then lysed the oocytes and isolated mRNA. Using a common primer for both the pseudo-wild type and the mutant, they performed a primer extension assay. They then compared the pseudo-wild type and mutant conditions on a gel to see where expression differed. Let's now talk about linker scanning mutagenesis in detail. Linker scanning mutagenesis lets us remove an element of DNA while still maintaining the overall length of the DNA molecule, which is useful when we're worried about disrupting protein-DNA interactions that depend on the length of the DNA, such as the distances between cis elements. This technique is performed by cutting each DNA molecule once and chewing back the ends. We can then ligate in a small linker sequence to fill the gap. By doing this in multiple places across the DNA, we can end up with a library of DNAs with the linker in various places throughout, which allows us to scan across the length of the DNA to find which areas are important for transcription. These were the linker scan mutants used in the actual experiment in figure 10.20. The top row is the wild type promoter sequence with the plus one being here. Each of the highlighted regions in another row is a different mutant. The highlighted regions aren't always contiguous, as sometimes the inserted bases match the wild type bases. You can see that the researchers have tiled the whole promoter to maximize the resolution of data that can be generated from this experiment. Let's talk about this weird idea of a pseudo wild type. Each oocyte is getting one mutated DNA. Each might have slightly different expression levels. We can put in DNA with the wild type promoter to get a control level of transcription, but how do we separate this control mRNA product out from the product with a mutated promoter? Their primer extension products will run the same length on a gel. The solution? Make a shorter version of the DNA sequence under the same wild type promoter, but with about 10 bases missing downstream of the plus one, but upstream of the promoter binding. The purpose of this construct is so that we have a baseline of transcription levels in the cells, so we can compare whether there's a difference in level of transcription for the linker scan DNAs by comparing the intensities of their RNA products to the pseudo wild type bands on a gel. So here's the data that the researchers got from their primer extension assay. They just took their products and ran it on a gel and then visualized it with autoradiography. So on the left here, we have a molecular weight marker. So this is just a size standard so they can size up their products. And across the top here, we have lanes. Each of these lanes represents a unique linker scan DNA. So the one furthest to the left has the linker inserted between the minus 119 and minus 109 sites. The one right next to it has a linker inserted between the minus 115 and minus 105 sites, etc., etc. You'll notice that there is a little bit of overlap between the two of these, and this becomes important a little bit later on when we delineate the boundaries of each of the promoter elements in the TK promoter. Right here we have our linker scanning DNA signals, so our experimental ones. Below that we have our pseudo wild type or control signals. Then down here we have primers and a lot of other junk that just did not anneal to the mRNA in the primer extension assay. And since this is not important to our data, we're just going to ignore it. So here's the data that actually matters to us. As you can see, there are two bands each in the linker scanning signal and the pseudo wild type signal. And what this indicates to us is that there are actually two plus one sites for this mRNA. So we're getting one slightly shorter mRNA than the other. So the last thing we need to remember before jumping into the data analysis of this gel is that for each of these lanes, we're going to want to compare the level of expression in the pseudo wild type signal to the linker scan signal. And this is because the pseudo wild type controls to differences in wild type expression between oocytes, because even though they all have the same transcription machinery, one oocyte might have higher levels of wild type transcription than the next oocyte. This is just due to natural variation. So the pseudo wild type signals allow us to control for that natural variation and actually track if there's a difference due to the insertion of the linker sequence within a promoter. 
So without further ado, we're just going to take this lane by lane. So Alright, so starting with this leftmost lane, we don't see a difference in the strength of the linker scanning signal and the pseudo wild type signal. So we're going to say that there's no change in transcription between the minus 119 and minus 109 sites in this promoter. An implication of saying that is that there is probably not a promoter element in this region that is important for the activated transcription that we see in the pseudo wild type signals. So moving along at, from minus 115 to minus 105, we also see no difference in the strengths of these signals. So we're going to say that there's no change in transcription. And now between minus 111 and minus 101, we do see diminished transcription here. This is about maybe five-fold stronger than this one is. So there is a change in transcription here, which implies that there is some sort of promoter element here that is important for fully activated transcription. Is it a required element for transcription? No, because we still do get some level of transcription without this promoter sequence. Moving along, here we have even more diminished transcription, so that's going to get a yes. Here we still see a change, so we're going to say yes, there is a change. Here there's still a difference, so yep. And here there's no difference again, so this is going to get a no. So now, once we scan through this part of the gel, we can see that there is a box between minus 111 and minus 80 that probably houses some sort of promoter element that's important for transcriptional activation in the herpes TK promoter. You'll notice that from minus 84 to minus 74 we did have diminished transcription, but once we reached minus 80 it was fully restored. So this means that the promoter element probably doesn't go further downstream than a minus 80 site. So somewhere between minus 111 and minus 80 there's a promoter element that's important for full transcription. So now moving along this gel, we have no change in transcription here between minus 79 and minus 69. No change here as well. And now we have a change again. This looks about three or four fold stronger than the linker scan signals. So that was going to get a yes. Here we have quite diminished transcription, so this is going to get a yes. And here we are back to full transcription and linker scanning signal. So we probably had an element somewhere between minus 59 and minus 47 and this minus 47 and minus 37 box is going to get assigned a no. Here there's no difference, so we're going to say no. Here we have absolutely no transcription once we put in the linker. So this element, whatever it may be, is required for transcription. We don't get any transcription without it, so this is going to get a yes. Here we have knocked out one of the signals that we normally get in the linker scan signal. And the other one looks very diminished, so this one's also going to get a yes. Here we're back to normal again, so it's going to get a no. Here we have a lot of weird things going on. We have these two bands that are really strong that don't normally show up, and we're also missing one of the linker scan signals down here, so that's going to get a yes. And now we're back to normal again. There's no difference between these two signals, so this is going to get a no. So now that we've mapped out all of the data, we need to make a small correction to our model of where we think the promoter elements are. For this leftmost element, we originally marked it as going up to minus 111, as the minus 101 to minus 111 band shows diminished signal. But if we look one band over at the band from minus 105 to minus 115, we do a full signal, indicating that this element can only go up to minus 105. We're going to go ahead and adjust our model here to account for this. Now let's try to map some of these elements back to the known elements on the general eukaryotic promoter we talked about earlier. Let's start with the more obvious one, from minus 29 to minus 16. It centered around minus 25 and is essential for transcription, so it's probably a tata box, which are typically centered around minus 25. Now let's talk about this larger element upstream here from minus 105 to minus 80. It is most likely some sort of upstream element, as they are typically located a decent distance away from the plus 1 and are important for wild type transcription. This region from minus 59 to minus 47 is probably also an upstream element, as it is still located a decent distance away from the plus 1. Lastly, this element around the plus 1 is almost certainly an INR, as they are typically located about the plus 1. To wrap up, other experiments have identified what these elements actually are in the herpes TK promoter. These two sets of upstream elements are actually a series of GC boxes. The element centered around minus 25 is actually a Tata box, and the element around plus one is in fact an INR. Thanks for watching. Go blue.